Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you where exactly we can find V-Ray with its options. In the previous video, we saw how we can set up V-Ray to be our rendering product, uh, render for production, and also how we can make sure that whenever we start with the material editor, it's always going to show up uh, V-Ray materials. So just to check it up, we're going to go in the material editor, click, and now we can see that all the materials have been set up with V-Ray materials. So first things, we're going to start off from here. Now, since we've installed V-Ray, V-Ray with its entirety has V-Ray materials that go with it. That means whenever we're working in a V-Ray scene, we want to use V-Ray materials. Now, when we click on a V-Ray material, we can see that we have different roll down menus. Let's click here. You can see that the basic parameters are quite a bit different from what you're accustomed to seeing in the default materials that come with Max. But in all honesty, V-Ray does work on a pretty uh, simple way of showing materials where all of the materials are broken down in three fields. Diffuse, which is the main color. Reflection, which uh, can be controlled by sliding the slider up and down. And refraction, or basically how refractive a certain material is or how much light can pass through it. But I don't want to go, uh, uh, go deeper into materials right now because I want to make a full video just for materials. I just want to mention it that when you're working with V-Ray, make sure that right here, if you have standard materials, just click it and from the drop down menu, go into V-Ray. You're going to see this here, V-Ray drop down menu. And here, just use one of the V-Ray materials. The most standard standard one is the V-Ray MTL or the V-Ray material. As soon as you select it, you're going to get something like this. So that's the first thing about V-Ray. Use V-Ray materials. But let's see what else we have with V-Ray. When we go into geometry, when we click down the roll down menu where it says standard primitives, on the bottom here, you're going to see a V-Ray tab. When you click it, you have four options that are uh, coming for directly from V-Ray. You have V-Ray proxy, that's for making uh, proxy items. I'm pretty sure that we're going to be using that later on and I'm going to have some more time to explain it, but for now I'm just going to show you where they, they can be found. We have V-Ray Fur, which is a great option if you want to make something uh, appear that it's like it's been made out of fur. Something similar to the uh, Max's uh, fur modifier, hair and fur modifier. So uh, next one comes in the uh, form of V-Ray Plane. Now this V-Ray Plane is kind of interesting because when you click it, you basically just get one simple looking plane. But here's a uh, interesting part. I'm gonna make this larger, so I'm just gonna go Alt W or just press Maximize Viewport Toggle. So when I zoom in, that plane kind of stays the same. When I zoom out, the plane is always the same. So what gives? Why do we make a plane that simply doesn't change form? Well, that's because the V-Ray plane is not just what you're seeing here, it's basically an endless field. So what does it mean? Well, let's just rotate a bit. Rotation in Max, I'm pretty sure that most of you know, but if you don't, you can just use Orbit Sub Object or press the Alt and the scroll, this orbit like this, or press Control R to get a more controlled rotation. Now, since we are looking at, us at an angle like this, I just, told you that this is an endless field. So if I render now, for example, render production, 
I'm going to see that as I can notice here, this field goes to the horizon, so it doesn't stop. So this is great if you want to have a scene in which you need a very big plane, so you don't have to like use a very large plane like this, and then it would come into your scene and make a fuss. So if you want to get a scene where you have one plane which is basically endless using a v-ray plane is the way to go and the last one is the v-ray sphere the v-ray sphere is when when you basically when you make it in the parameters the only thing that you have is to set up is the radius now if i zoom in and then rotate it around, you're gonna see that this sphere is basically made out of three circles. Now, why would we use this kind of sphere? Well, for example, I'm gonna press the number seven on my keyboard so I can see the statistics of the scene. As I can see, my scene right now has zero polygons and zero vertices. Opposed to, let's say if I created, uh, let's just, make a normal sphere, I create a normal sphere like this and put it next to it. Oh, one other thing, uh, these selection brackets, I'm not a big fan of those because when you're working and they tend to get in the way, so I always tend to basically tick them off. So by pressing the J button, they are removed. So right now, I have 960 polygons or 482 vertices in the scene. That's just from this sphere. But now let me render one time and see what happens. As we can see, we have two spheres in the scene. If we come a bit closer, we're going to see that this sphere tends to be more perfect unlike here where we can see some jaggedness on the edges. So if you want to have spheres appearing in your scene, but you want to keep it in a lower budget, so you, you don't uh, really overcrowd your scene, feel free and use the V-Ray spheres, as they are great ways to basically substitute geometry. Now, that was in the geometry section. Now, if we go to the lights, in the drop-down menu, we have a V-Ray option here. If we click it, we're going to see that unlike the standard lights, which you have target, free spot, uh, target direct, free direct, and all that, in the V-Ray lights, you basically have four lights. You have the V-Ray light, which is, well, simple to use because you just click it and you drag it out and you get one plane, which if you like rotate it a bit, there we go, you can see that on the side it has an arrow pointing outwards. That is showing you where the light is going to be traveling towards. So this plane over here is basically going to be emitting light. And this pointer or this arrow is showing you where that light is going. Now, if you go into the modify tab and see all the parameters for the V-Ray light, you're going to see that up here, you can change it. So it doesn't have to be a plane. It can be a dome. It can be a sphere or it can even be a mesh. But more about these in a later video, like I said, I want to make sure that I have everything explained and I want to make sure that enough time has been given for all of these options. Now, except for the V-Ray light, we have the V-Ray IES or Illuminating Engineering Society lights. These lights are actually great. Why? Because when you click it, you just click and drag out and you get something like, well, a targeted light. 
but the great thing about these lights is that they can use an IES file which can give it a nice shape but like I said more about this in the lesson about V-Ray lighting so you know, remove those two and we have the V-Ray Sun another great uh, lighting options which this option is basically giving you this when you click and drag out it's always uh, gonna give you this option would you like to automatically add a v-ray sky environment map the way v-ray uh, sun works is it tries to mimic the way a real sun would work so if you like raise it upwards it's gonna emit more light if you raise it exactly above it's gonna give you the way that it's gonna be noontime so if I add a V-Ray Sky environment map, it's going to put a V-Ray Sky into the environment map and give it extra illumination. For now, I'm just going to click it no. But like I said previously, more about this in the lighting option uh, portion of V-Ray. Now, in cameras, also we have V-Ray. And V-Ray basically has two cameras, a V-Ray dome camera and a V-Ray physical camera. The physical camera is the one we're going to be using most of the time and unlike the standard cameras v-ray cameras work tend to work a bit different as they try to mimic a dslr camera or a professional camera with all of the options you can set like the f number which directly is going to uh, control how much light comes into your uh, camera the shutter speed uh, the iso and basically you're going to be able to control every single parameter with those we have some uh, helpers with the v-ray helpers you have stereoscope the light meter which is something that's really good when you're trying to control how much light comes into your scene but that's for later and with that we can see the basic places where V-Ray appears. Also, when you have some something in your scene, let's say a simple teapot, if you like right click on it, you're gonna see that right down, here you have a few more V-Ray options. So you have the V-Ray properties, the V-Ray scene converter, mesh export, the V-Ray visual frame buffer or VFB. And down we have the VR scene exporter, VR animation exporter. But more for those in following videos. I just, like I said, I just wanted to make sure that I just mentioned them now. So, all in all, that would be a nice introduction on where you can find the options that come with V-Ray. So, thank you for listening and... See ya.